welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and this is Rosa and she is filthy. Or at least that's what you might have heard and what some people like to tell me. Today we are going to find out if my life is in danger by simply touching her. Meaning we will discover if reptiles are actually bacteria ridden monsters or are they just scaly victims of misinformation and fear mongering. Let's go! So when people find out that I have reptiles, specifically snakes, I usually get one of two reactions. My favorite is neat, I love reptiles. The other more common reaction tends to be some kind of question concerning my safety. Usually it's about my snakes attacking or eating someone or something they shouldn't, me, my family, or my cats. Which leads to an explanation from me that between you and I is usually not believed. I tell them even my biggest snakes pose very little risk of injury. In fact, the most dangerous animal I have in my house by far is that purring orange 20 pound tub of fur back there. The other question I get regarding my safety is about germs. When I kept aquatic turtles, it was always the first thing out of people's mouth. Aren't you worried about them making you sick? No, I wasn't. Aware, yes, but worried, no. And I still get that question about all of my animals, except for my cats. But with bearded dragons being in the news fairly recently, I thought it was high time to do a little experiment and find out for myself how dirty and germy my reptiles really are. Is my body about to be invaded by microscopic villains insidiously spread by my reptiles? Harmful bacteria that could make me sick or even kill me? It's scary stuff. So how risky is it really for me to handle my animals? We all know germs are real, of course. Ancient Greeks and Romans wrote 2400 years ago about unseen spore-like seeds spreading disease. Hey, that rhymes. Ancient Indian physician Shashruta, often called the father of surgery, whose techniques are still being used to this day, wrote in the seventh century of disease being spread invisibly through close contact with others. But it wasn't until the 19th century when modern germ theory really got some traction. And for well over a hundred years, we've been understanding microscopic pathogens more and more. So we can all agree that germs are something we need to worry about. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine if people just stopped believing a dangerous pathogen was actually dangerous and just stop doing the things that would slow or stop the spread? I mean, what would that even be like? Ridiculous. Anyway, Germs are everywhere, including on our reptiles. But are my reptiles actually so filthy that my mom and dad are right to bark at me to stop kissing my snakes? Or do we need to be more worried about touching them than my cats or my cell phone? Maybe, but why is this even such a concern? Salmonella, that's why. The presence of salmonella on reptiles and what salmonella does to us seems to be what started it all. There are certainly other types of bacteria that could be present on reptiles, mycobacterium, campylobacter, E. coli, and a bunch of others that I will probably mispronounce, but salmonella seems to be what's cemented into the collective consciousness as the reptile germ. Salmonella is a pretty common bacteria. There are two species, one of which is divided into six subspecies by the way. It is. Well, it's kind of sprinkled around everywhere on everything. It does really well in raw meat and is heavily concentrated in the intestines of many animals, including humans and reptiles. It comes out into the world through our and their poop. By walking, slithering, swimming, or rolling in the poop, it gets on their body and potentially into us. A spat of salmonella poisoning assumed to be from aquatic turtles decades ago was enough to create a scare and lead to a notion among many that our reptiles are filthy vectors for disease. Iceland, for example, banned all all reptiles outright due to a single case of salmonella in the 90s. They actually banned dogs for a period of time in the 1920s over fear of them spreading disease. And to be fair, there is some Icelandic wildlife that is very susceptible to certain pathogens, so I can understand a bit of an overabundance of caution. Our friends over at PETA helpfully tell visitors to their site that because the risk is so high, the CDC will warn you against getting a reptile as a pet. Now, I've gone to the CDC website. It does say that reptiles can carry salmonella and that care should be taken when handling, duh. But I could not actually find anything on there warning people to not get reptiles. I'm sure it was unintentional. I mean, it'd be weird if PETA was misinforming people like that on purpose, eh? Unless they don't want people having pets. 
hmm. But they aren't wrong that there are risks. At least that's what a lot of studies show us. It'd be irresponsible of us to ignore the science, even if it tells us that our skilly friends that we love so much might just be one missed hand washing away from killing us. So I have to tell you that there are studies from several countries that show that those who own or handle reptiles are more likely to contract salmonella. Depending on the study, that increased likelihood ranges from minuscule to pretty significant. So I'm not here to suggest that salmonella or other germs are not present on reptiles. I just kind of want to know how much there is on mine and how does that compare against my cats or maybe some other items in my home. I am not a scientist. I have no idea what this little experiment is going to reveal and no matter what the outcome is, please do not equate this to actual scientific studies or base what you do with your reptiles on the outcome or cite this as evidence for one position versus another. I'm just trying to satisfy a bit of my own curiosity, okay? So here's the plan. I ordered a nutrient agar kit and we'll be mixing up a bunch of plates. First, I will swap the following reptiles, Jub Jub, Agatha, Tassara, and aquatic turtle from a pet store, because you know, that's where it all started, and Rosa. I will be taking samples from different zones on their bodies, near their mouth, their bellies, their backs, and near their cloacas. In order to compare the growth from each zone, I will be smearing the samples in the same area of each dish. The head for all the animals at the top of the dish, and the butt at the bottom, the back on the left, and the belly on the right. I will also be taking samples from Oscar, a friend's dog, my cell phone, house keys, and myself too. Because you never know. Maybe I'm filthier than my reptiles. Wouldn't that be trippy? <laughs> Once the samples are all collected, I'll incubate the plates for about 10 days and see what's what. Now, I am not a trained scientist, and whatever the results that come out of this are, this should not be taken as proof one way or another, but should provide some insight into how filthy our scaly friends really are. I'm very interested to see what the findings suggest. If you are interested in doing an experiment like this with your own reptiles, I'll put a link in the description below to the kit that I purchased, or rather I should say the kit was paid for by the generosity of my patrons, some of whom are these super awesome folks here. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please head on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl. Thanks. While you're at it, please be sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you've hit the notification bell so you won't miss the exciting, or not, I don't know yet because I haven't swabbed anything, um, conclusion to this fun experiment when I post a part two of this video in a few weeks. All right, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below which of my reptiles or non-reptiles or items will be the dirtiest. I think maybe Jerry, that's the friend's dog, but you guys haven't smelt him yet. Will it be the aquatic turtles that started the scare or Oscar? Gasp! Or me? Oh, well, you know, your father does say that you kind of smell disgusting. I'm gonna ignore that. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye! Five minutes later. Bye! Alright, we good? Yeah, we're all done. Alright, Dad? You coming? I'll take Rosa, I'll put her away. All right, sounds good. You guys get good. all set up for the sides. All right. Come on, Rosa. Good girl. And maybe we'll have some salad. Oh, that'll be fun. There you go. Okay. is already set up for the side, so we just okay. need to move the camera. Okay, bye, have fun. All right, bye. Oh. How'd it go? I think it went well, I just blinded myself. Good job. With <laughs> Um. Yeah, do you know how to do the, um, how to get the slide once the bacteria is all grown? I did it in high school. I don't go to high school. Well, you could Google it, or you could ask your favorite scientist. Favorite scientist? I don't have a favorite scientist. I'm not a weirdo like you. Your sister. Oh, yeah. She's not a scientist yet. She is a scientist. She works in a lab. She's getting yeah. a PhD. Yeah. She's a scientist. I'm very proud of her. You should be. Yeah. She's gonna be a doctor. You and I both know the only reason that Alex wants to be a doctor is so that when she gets a package and it arrives, she can go, ha, just what the doctor ordered. Uh. <laughs> 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 you did, I, did you say, have you said that to her? No. Jesus. Is this still recording?